Welcome to Preparing for COVID-19, Tips, Tricks and Strategies for the Tech World. Hi, I'm Jason Taylor and I'm an SSW Solution Architect. You can find me on Twitter at JasonTaylorDev or on my blog JasonTaylor.dev. Now, of course, normally I'd be talking to you about code, but tonight I'm going to talk to you about working remotely, something that I've been doing for the past 10 years. Now, typically this would involve working for a remote client, but also I tend to work from home on a regular basis and I've been doing that for about six years. So tonight I want to share some of my favorite strategies for working remotely working from home, and some useful tools to help you remain connected and productive. Let's start with some strategies for remote working. First and foremost, staying connected. When working remotely, you might not feel very visible. You may even feel like you're not part of the team, and this can be a bit of a reality. It's so important to fix that. It's up to you to bridge the gap and stay connected, and the best way to do that is to start every day with a daily quick team catch up. Now at SSW, we follow Scrum, so this is just our daily Scrum. So if you have a look at uh, my calendar, you can see my daily Scrum is running from 9.15 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Uh, it's nice and quick. We're using Teams, uh, we use our microphone and our webcam so we can see and hear everyone very easily. It's much better than just typing in messages. Uh, one of the features I like about Teams actually is, is when someone joins early, you know, a couple of minutes early, it'll pop up a message and say, hey, someone's already joined, do you wanna to join too? And you can just click join and jump right in there with them. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you're not using Scrum, um, you might like to have a, a daily catch up where you talk about the most important tasks of the day. So each of you talk about the three things that you want to accomplish that day. Um, that can be a really, really positive approach to help outline what, you, what you're trying to achieve and keep everyone on the same page. Um, and also, if you need some help or you need some information, that can be a good, good opportunity to request that uh, help or information. Now, if you can't attend the daily catch up, don't just miss it and, um, you know, catch up at the next instance, send the message and let the team know what it is that you're going to be working on anyway, um, and show them that you really care, that it's important that everyone's kept in the loop. So next, I want you to prioritize communications. This is so important. When you're working in an office environment and someone needs to speak to you, it's easy, right? They can just walk up to you and say hello or hi. But it's not so easy when you're working remotely. Yes, they can call you, they can send a message, and hopefully you'll get back to them quickly, but maybe not. You know, we all tend to get focused on the task at hand, and so some of those things can kind of fall by the wayside. So when working remotely, make it easy for people to reach you. Prioritize your communication channel. So that means, you know, picking up the phone, responding to that message you received, and staying on top of your emails. Now, I'm not saying that you have to drop everything every time someone tries to reach you, but at least get back to them quickly. You know, a quick message to say, hey, I'm really focused right now, but I'll get back to you shortly will go a long way. Again, showing the team that you care. Next, recording done videos. Now, this is something that I learned from SSW rules before I joined SSW. So typically, when you're developing a new feature, you won't demonstrate that feature until the sprint review, right? Well, with this approach, the way it works is that when you've completed a new feature, um, you record a quick and dirty done video, maybe three to five minutes, just to demonstrate that new feature. Then you'll send it on to the team and the client, and they'll review it and hopefully provide you with some useful feedback back. Now, I think clients really like these videos because you might do two or three a day and they can watch them at a time that suits them. You know, maybe before the daily scrum would be a good time. Um, also, they'll often share these videos with their team so that everyone can see how the project is progressing. But the best thing about this is that when you take this approach, you will always have amazing sprint reviews. Next, fixing bugs with a phone call. I bet you didn't know you could do that. This is one of my favorite strategies. So when I receive a bug report, I don't read it. I just look at who sent it and give them a call. I ask them to share their screen and reproduce the bug. Now, if they're able to, that's great. I'll have all the information that I need to fix it so I can get on, on top of doing that. Now, if they can't re reproduce it, because maybe it was some external issue or maybe um, they figured it out, it was something they were doing wrong, then happy days, right? I can just close that bug report and get back to whatever it was that I was doing, hopefully building new features. Um, so always, always give people a call. 
Now, the goal here is, of course, awesome service. Um, when we call straight away, the person on the other end of the line knows we care and that, and that hopefully their bug will be fixed quickly. So contrast this with big enterprise where it could take like one to three weeks to get that phone call um, and maybe even longer to get it fixed. Um, that's a pain we can do without. So we're not, we're not going to settle for that standard. Let's give them a call straight away. Okay, so maintaining productivity. There are so many strategies that you can use to maintain productivity. Here are my top three. So first, I like to create a list of the most important tasks for today. And it's good to limit it to three tasks because you can always add more, but sometimes it can, can be hard just to get three done. So I'll try to complete my most important tasks at the very beginning of the day when I'm nice and fresh. Um, obviously, that works a lot better than waiting until 4.55 p.m. When, when, when you're kidding yourself if you think you're going to get anything else done. Um, so this is really good because it really sets the tone for the day. I'll finish these tasks and, and then I'll move on to whatever else I, it is that I need to do. Next to-do list. So when I'm developing, I'll typically create a to-do list called Focus, and um, I'll list out all of the things that I need to um, deliver that new feature. Um, as I complete items on the list, I'll strike them out. And then when I'm working, if there's other things that I'm thinking about, maybe external to this task, I'll note those down as well so that I don't get distracted, so that I can focus on, you know, validating the new customer rather than browsing Amazon to buy that new book that I'm looking for. Now, this really helps to reduce my cognitive load. There's all sorts of things that I'm thinking about when I'm trying to develop a new feature. Um, and, and oftentimes they're external to the actual development of the new feature. Maybe I'm thinking now ahead about the next feature that I'm going to build. And so I can note things down on this list so that I don't forget them. You know, oftentimes it'll be the thing that I say, I, I, I must not forget to do this. Well, when I note it down on this list, I don't forget it. I always have it there and I refer back to it. But but when I when I just say to myself, I must not forget to do this, I always forget to do it. It's kind of like a trigger in my brain that says, yep, forgotten. All right, next we have the Pomodoro technique. So this is a technique that I use when I want to give 100% focus to a specific task. Now I'm going to give a really brief overview of how this works. So first you'll choose a task that you would like to get done. Then you'll set a timer for 25 minutes. Now that's equal to one Pomodoro. You'll work on that task until the timer rings, until the 25 minutes is up, and then you'll take a short break, typically five minutes. And then every four Pomodoros, you'll take a longer break. So this cycle will continue throughout the whole day or until you complete the task. Now, I like to use this strategy um, when I'm procrastinating about something. Maybe it's a task that I don't want to start, something that I'm looking forward to. Um, I'll usually have a lot of reasons, um, but I find that if I just start a Pomodoro, 10 minutes in, I'll forget whatever those reasons are and I'll be making really good progress. So it's a really good tool for that sort of thing or when you've got something big that you want to tackle. Now, there are lots of apps you can use. I, I do like to use Kanban Flow kanbanflow.com from time to time because it has a nice little built-in timer. It tells you when to take a break. It tells you when to take a longer break um, and it tracks your stats so you can see how many Pomodoros you got done today or last week or this week. Um, so that's quite useful. But really all you need is a timer and a task to work on. So, you know, oftentimes just using Siri or Cortana or the timer in Windows um, is, is more than ample. Just depends on how long you're going to be focused on your tasks as to whether you might want something more substantial. All right, now let's look at some strategies for working from home. So first and foremost, I want you to keep your morning routine. So get up at a normal time, um, you know, get dressed in your in, in, in some kind of uniform, whether it's just some comfortable um, kind of lounge wear that you're going to work in so that, so that you can enjoy your day. Um, do that, but keep your morning routine, or maybe, maybe even establish a new routine, something that you're going to do before you start work start to build some new healthy habits. So whatever it was that you would do before work or on the commute, such as, you know, maybe uh, listening to podcasts or exercising, keep doing that um, and, and help to create a clear distinction between work time and home time. Okay, and next, flexible working hours. So flexible working hours is obviously one of the greatest benefits of working from home, but it doesn't mean you can be lazy, sleep in and just start whenever you want. You have a commitment to the team and you need to keep those regular working hours. So I like to work from 7.30 a.m. till 4 p.m. Um, some other members of the team like to work from 9 till 6. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever your working hours, start on time and finish on time and let the team know if you're going to be finishing late or, um, you know, 
starting early or whatever it may be, um, it really helps to keep a clear distinction between work time and home time. Okay, and next, taking regular breaks. This is so important. Get up, move away from the screen, have a stretch, grab a coffee, no excuses. Even if you don't drink coffee, maybe you could just have a water or a tea. Um, a lot of programmers convert coffee into code, so work doesn't get done without these breaks, right? But jokes aside, remember that sitting at a desk all day is bad for your health. You need to take regular breaks, so don't skip them. Next, dedicated workspace. Ideally, you have some kind of workspace in a room, a spare room, a dedicated office if you're lucky enough, where you can shut the door and people know that you're focused and hopefully they won't interrupt you. Um, this is my workspace. Um, I've just recently upgraded. I've bought some new equipment. So starting off with the Logitech Brio 4K webcam. This is a big improvement over the laptop webcam. Um, the video and, and audio quality is awesome. Um, noticeable difference there. Um, um, I also grabbed the Rode Podcaster MK2 microphone with the mic arm and shock mount, um, as recommended by, by by our good friend Raj of SSW TV. Um, so this is to improve the audio quality um, when I'm presenting online or when I'm recording new content. Um, so this is this is making an absolute big difference. Um, next, I got the ring light, um, which is $82. It's excellent value. It supports uh, multiple hue and brightness settings, so I can set the right right kind of settings for the time of the day um, and this is useful just to, you know for my daily scrums just so people can see me better see me clearly um, but obviously it's great for for recording online content as well so having the right equipment is is really important but all you need is that people can hear you and see you clearly and to make that work all you need to do is test your settings before you join whatever video call you're going to be joining okay don't be the person that joins and says, oh, hang on, my mic's not working or I can't hear you or those sort of things. You know, get those issues out of the way so that when you connect, everyone can just start talking and, and, and you know, talk about whatever it is that you, you, you're you meeting about. So new gear aside, um, you can see that I've kept my work space nice and clean and simple. Everything's within arm's reach. It's not cluttered. Clutter tends to distract me um, so I can really stay focused in this space, which is great. All right, next, ergonomics is important. Now, I kind of touched on this when we mentioned flexible working hours. Um, you know, you're working from home, so you might think working from the couch is great. I'm just going to work from the couch. I'm going to be so comfortable. Working from the beds are going to be even more comfortable. That's going to be amazing. So maybe I'll just work from the bed instead because who wants to get up and walk over to the couch anyway, right? Um, you can work wherever you want because you have a laptop. Um, not, not, not at a cafe because they took away all our chairs and tables, but you know, pretty much wherever you want. But when you're working five days a week, eight hours a day, um, that's not going to cut it. And neither is that $60 chair that you bought from Officeworks. You have to take your ergonomics seriously. Um, at a minimum, recommend having a decent chair, um, making sure your desk is at the right height, your monitor's set up correctly, and that you take regular breaks. Um, if you don't, you're quickly going to find yourself in a lot of pain. You're going to have injuries. You're not going to be able to work. It's just not worth the hassle. You know, focus on your ergonomics. It's going to it's going to save you a lot of hassle later on. All right, let's talk about some useful tools. So we'll kick it off with Microsoft Outlook. Now, you might be using something else, perhaps Gmail um, or, or some other tool. Um, whatever it is that you're using, whatever is your flavor, um, it's essential. It's for our emails, our meetings, our tasks and so on. Next, we have Microsoft Teams. Um, obviously, at SSW, we're using Teams. Slack and Skype are a couple of popular alternatives. Um, we think Teams is cool. It runs on any device. We're using it for chatting with each other, hosting video meetings, sharing screens, storing files, and it even integrates with with, with other apps such as um, Azure DevOps, actually. Um, so Jira is a good option as well. Uh, we use Azure DevOps for agile planning and estimating, um, co collaborating with the team, committing changes, reviewing pull requests. I've um, got a couple of examples for you. Here's my current sprint backlog that I'm working on. And here's a burn down trend from, from a previous project, which, which was particularly successful. You can see we came, came well under there, which was, which was great. 
So next we have Visual Studio Live Share. So when you're working on site, you know, it's easy to get your programmer friends to come and look at um, something that you're working on, maybe something cool that you've built or um, maybe an issue that you're having trouble with. It's easy to pair program and that sort of thing, but not so when you're working remotely. But fortunately with VS Live Share, we kind of bridge that gap. So we can use it to collaboratively write, run and debug code um, with teammates in real time which is cool. Um, so if you want to do some pair programming, that's no problem. Um, if you need help with a tricky issue, you can use VS Live Share. Um, it makes it easy to work together to kind of resolve those issues. Um, VS Live Share should really be standard for anyone who's who's working remotely. Now, I've got a, uh, uh, um, the website loaded up here. You can see that out of the box, it's included with Visual Studio 2019, so nothing to install. If you're using Visual Studio Code, go ahead and download the extension. You'll get up and running quickly. And there's also a preview for running VS Live Share in the browser, which is kind of cool. So check check that out. Okay, next we have Visual Studio Code Remote Development. So this is a preview feature. It can be tricky to get up and running, but it's worth the effort if you need this feature. It essentially allows you to use a container, remote machine, the Windows subsystem for Linux as a fully featured remote development environment. So if your laptop or home PC is not quite up to scratch, this can be a great alternative, right? So why not spin up a, um, a 32 core, 64 gig of RAM virtual machine in Azure and use that instead? Then you can ditch the laptop and just use your Raspberry Pi. It'll be more than sufficient. Okay, so that's it. So in summary, today I've shared my favorite strategies for working remotely, working from home, and some useful tools to help you stay connected and productive. Now, I couldn't share everything. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to visit rules.sw.com.au and check out Rules to Better Remote Work. There's a lot more information there. Um, if you have some tips of your own to share, we'd love to hear from you. So be sure to shout those out. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Good night and thank you.